I'm Annabelle and welcome back to Meeple Village. Today we are playing Path of Light and Shadow. One of our viewers asked us to learn more about this game, so I'm going to be doing a two-player full run-through for you guys today. This is a deck builder in its core, but it also has some area control mechanics, a lot of combat, dice rolling. You guys are gonna love it. Why don't you just join me at the table and let's play Path of Light and Shadow. Okay guys, I have the game almost set up, but let's go over setup so you understand what it is that you need to do before you can start playing. So obviously the first thing, the board is on the table, ready to go, and this game board is double-sided. So if you're playing with uh, two players, then you're gonna use the side that has a white compass. If you're playing with more than two players, then you flip it over and there are just more spaces to be contended uh, in the map. Now, the next thing we need to do is set up defense in the provinces, in the different places. So it's really easy to do. There is a little number uh, next to the um, name of the province, and that's gonna tell you how much defense. Every little peep here is gonna count as one defense. So that's a seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I already went ahead and did that all over the board, so that's already set. The next thing we need to do is uh, set up all the decks, because this is, at its heart, a deck builder. You're gonna be getting better cards into your hand, culling or destroying cards that you don't want, and, and that's how you're gonna be more powerful and be able to do more things during your turn. Uh, a hand always consists of five cards, so if you have cards that are better, then you're gonna get a more productive turn. So the way you do that is very simple. Every um, deck is going to have on the bottom the symbol that you need to place. Uh, so all of these cards have that green uh, little mountain or forest symbol. So let's give that a shuffle. And uh, these are, I shuffled before we started, but just in case, the quick shuffle. So these are the uh, gray or yeah, gray triangle, which is that section right there, this section right there. So that's that. Then we have the yellow kind of little star going on which is here and here, okay, and one more deck, the blue, which is here and up there. So those are nice and shuffled. So these are our decks that belong to each province. Now, aside from that, we have our um, upgrade decks and those are down here. You can tell most of them are face up. And again, same thing. You see that little hook right there. It's going to be on the bottom and you can keep these uh, organized for every game. You, you kind of, it's actually better that way. They, they don't, they have a certain order according of what cards you're going to be upgrading. You can just find them and you'll see that done. The only deck that's different is this one. It's the, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Numeri deck. And these uh, cards, when you upgrade the Numeri, you do it randomly. So you never know what you're gonna get. So we're gonna shuffle these. And of course, because they're random, it they also means that whatever power you're gonna get is random, but they're very powerful. So it's, it's a good thing to upgrade these and you probably you'll see that during the game. So that's the deck. Now uh, we can go on ahead and uh, get our allies. Our allies are kind of objectives that we can pursue. If we want to, we don't have to. In this game, you can win in so many ways uh, that sometimes you get lost in the strategy. But I'm gonna go ahead and it's, it's uh, two uh, plus the number of players. So um, actually, it's whatever players plus one is what I meant to say. So in this game, we're gonna have three because it's two players and then plus one. So let's go ahead and get those allies ready. Okay, so these are the ally cards. Let's give them a good shuffle and see which allies we're gonna get in this game. We are going to have the port ship, right? Um, which wants us to control two provinces that have that little anchor. Put it right here, which is here, and the other anchor, and there's three, three actually that we can get. And then next up, All Father, control a uh, hallowed veil, which is the yellow provinces. And to control a province, you need to have two. Uh, to control a region, I guess, you need to control two provinces. So this one and wherever, over here. That's how you get to control the first person. The first player to control those two provinces gets that ally, which is gonna give them a special power for the rest of the game. So the sooner you do it, the better. Not that it's easy to do, you'll see. And then last but not least, we got the city commander. Uh, control at least two uh, provinces with that little village symbol, which it's Aramek, and where else do we get a, a, a right here? Barongard, for example, those would do it. 
So we have those three objectives and these other ones like control the, the woodland nation, uh, control at least two provinces, all the other ones, they, they are not going to be used this game. So we can put them back in the box, but we have one, two, three, four, like six more that. So every game you're going to get uh, a random uh, allies uh, in the game. So next up, we put the uh, turn marker on space number one and the game is going to last like you see down on the bottom three years every year you're going to have four turns and at the end of every year you have an end of the year scoring and it's we're going to get influence which are victory points and um at the end of the game we not only have an end of the year scoring but we also have an end of the game scoring and that's what's going to determine the winner so we know we're going to play 12 turns. Uh, let's go ahead and set up the players. This is a two player game. I've picked the yellow and the, the red as my players. And just to show you on the board, I have, they start at five influence or remember five victory points, which means that in this game you can lose uh, victory points by calling cards, which you will see. And there's other, maybe other things that will let you, that will have you lose influence, which you know is points. And also we start right here and at the zero mark for cruel or merciful and uh, in this game you can either be nice or you can be kind of nasty you can be cruel and what i'm going to do is i'm going to split the, the players uh, i'm going to have one be merciful one be kind of cruel so you guys get a feeling of what those uh, feel like and the different powers that you get by going to the dark side or staying in the light uh, let's look at the player boards so here's our yellow player and here's our red player for the first marker goes to the yellow player you can choose that at random i just chose him because it's on the top uh we put a yellow cube uh the, the color of the player obviously on the top of every tree of buildings that you can build and you will see me doing that just know that there's uh how many one two three four five different trees that you can do when you build these buildings they relate to the color so in order for me to build a green building i have to have a green card this is the only one that is color black it's not related to any faction actually not this one this one the, the general one um i can use any color card to build these buildings but the black the blue the green and the yellow are all going to you know kind of match uh, the colors of the provinces and we also pick a base and pick a miniature to represent us so this is mr yellow player right here with his big mace uh, and we're going to put him on the board in a minute uh, also the cards that we start with this is a deck builder everybody starts with the same cards we're going to get uh, a couple of these dudes one two three four uh, three three of these dudes the steadfast uh construct and then four trusted followers four ladies so four ladies and three dudes but we're going to add more cards to our hand in a minute uh red player same deal so he's all set up now i said i was going to add some cards to our starting deck and the way you do that is you get one unique card so let's go ahead and pick that one because it's a deck builder, the cards have the same backing. These are unique powers. You can get the Oracle, the Tactician, the Salesword, the Recruiter. And that's actually going to give you a little bit of, uh, I guess, uh, if you want to kind of follow the power that you get on your unique starting card, it can help you build a strategy right from the get go. For example, if you get like the builder, the guy that helps you build, maybe you want to focus on building. If you get the guy that is good at fighting, maybe you want to fight. Uh, but maybe you want to fight anyways, because fighting is fun. So let's see what we get. This guy is going to get the translator and she's good at building. This card belongs to each faction. It's going to help me build any color building. So let's put that one there. And then red player gets the recruiter uh yeah and he's going to of course be good at recruiting so we'll put that there these cards are not going to be used this game we'll go ahead and put them away apart from that we also have to pick the location where our heroes are going to start and that's going to give us even more cards to add to our starting decks that's why i haven't shuffled them yet we go in turn order and we have to start at a province with a windmill so mr yellow can pick to go to pilgrim walk or jezra and or riddle cliff uh, so where do I want to start? Uh, I'm going to have him be merciful. So I want to get some cards and also I want to build. So I want to get some cards that uh, are going to help me do that. And I know that uh, blue kind of tr triggers more of the uh, attack cards. The uh, yellow and the green are good for, um, uh, especially the green I know is really good at recruiting and building and all of that. So I think because of that, I'm going to have him start here. And what I do is, Whatever color or whatever province I uh, stand in or start with, I get two more cards added to my hand. And now I'm ready to shuffle my starting deck 
And we all start with five cards in our hand. That is our hand size. So shuffle these. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. Yellow player is ready to go. And then same thing for the red player. Where is he going to start? He's going to start. He wants to go bad. He wants to go cruel. So I'll start in the blue land. Now, obviously, just because I'm standing here and grabbing two cards doesn't mean that these cards, I might get cards that actually do not help me fight at all because there is a chance that you can get those cards, but these decks have a variety of things in them. And actually, if you look closely, it'll tell you like what kind of cards you can get. See how here it tells you uh, purple, which is Numeri, then black, which is the fighters, and the blue, which you know also help you fight a little bit. And over here is a totally different Different configuration and it goes from most to least so the here the, the most you're gonna find are green cards makes sense right then yellow then purple over here the most you're gonna find is gray because that's a gray area so you kind of see how what how the um, how it goes you know so it's nice that they did that kind of like let you know what's what you might possibly get but maybe not all right we shuffled mr. red and we're gonna give him five cards one two three four five Okay, and with that, we're ready to go to gameplay. Okay, so it's the first player's turn. These are the cards that the first player turn has, the yellow player has in their hand. The game suggests, because at the end of your turn, you have to uh, recruit a card from the province where you're at. And the game suggests you might forget this, so to go ahead and put a banner on top of your deck. And I know I will forget this because I'm doing, uh, I'm talking to you guys, and it's easy, it's easy to forget. Even if I wasn't talking to you guys, I will probably do that. Just to, before I draw again, remember that I gotta get a card from the province where I'm standing at. Now, on your turn, you can do a couple of things. Well, actually, you can do a lot of things. But one of the things that you can do is you can move to an adjacent province and uh, then you can play as many cards as you want. Moving is optional, you don't have to, and you don't have to do it at the beginning of your turn. You can do it whenever you want. You can do anything whenever you want, pretty much. So I think I like where I'm at. I'm getting good cards that are gonna help me build. And also I'm at a province that it only has six defense, so I might be able to conquer that, which I wanna show you guys. But in the meantime, let's do some building and some promoting and some good stuff. So I wanna focus this guy on building buildings and promoting cards and just being good, being all around a good guy. So with that in mind, I am going to start by using these two little girls for their hammers and their labor. So together they have four labor. Now, if we look at the buildings over here, actually, you know what? I gotta use, let me use this lady. Come here, come back here and I'll tell you why in a minute. If I use these two ladies, come here ladies, same amount, four. However, when I build with this lady, I can, this counts as any color. And this is green, and this will let me do any color, and the building I wanna do is yellow. So with this, I'd be able to build the yellow building, which costs four labor, numbers right there, and I just move my cube down to indicate that I've built that building. Now, when I build the next building, I get the benefits of anything that's here and above. But right now, we're just here. And this is gonna help me build even more in the future because now I get a discount. You get a discount of minus one labor, minus one hammer. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do on my turn. These are in my play area, I already used them. The next thing I'm gonna do on my turn is to go ahead and promote cards. And I think I wanna promote the lady if possible. On the bottom of the card, it tells you how much it costs to promote. She costs two labor to promote and she's gonna turn into a trusted, uh, right here, loyalist. And these are gonna be her stats. So instead of her having two and one, she's gonna go to two and two, which is gonna help me to maybe conquer a province because obviously you need swords to conquer. Now, two labor, uh, he only has one labor, she has two labor. So actually with her, with her two labor, I can go ahead and uh, go ahead and promote her. So I'm gonna play that one, and then this one, I'm going to promote. This guy is still in my hand, put him down. So when you promote a starter card, it goes just out of the game. If I promote a card that's not a starter card, then I just put it back on whatever deck it came from, and you'll see that later. But for now, I'm gonna go into the uh, advanced deck and find me a trusted loyalist. Okay, so I know the trusted loyalist is going to be on uh, here on the green deck. So all I gotta do is go find it. Steadfast card. Where is that trusted loyalist? There it is, trusted loyalist. So I just take the card out, leave the other ones in place, put them back here, and just like the card told us, we get two and two. Plus, we're gonna get a special power 
uh, this card gains plus one sword or attack for every four cruelty you have and plus one labor for every four mercy you have and since i like mercy hopefully i'll get uh, that benefit in the future the card that i just picked up goes into my discard pile it will come back later now i only have one card in my hand and this guy is good at fighting so i'm gonna go ahead and keep him in my hand i won't uh, give him up and then after that, every card that I played, not the ones that are still in my hand, are going to go in my discard pile. And thank God I remembered to keep that banner there because now I get two cards from the deck where I'm standing. So I'm still standing at my starting location here at Riddle Cliff. So I get one card that I put on my discard pile, another one of these dudes. And if I want to, and this is optional, I can get a second card. Now, if I do get a second card, I'm going to get one Mercy. Uh, so the Bread player might not want to do that because they're trying to fight off that Mercy. They want to go cruel, but I, I like Mercy. So I'm going to go ahead and optionally take a second card, another one of these dudes. Okay, well, and I'm going to go ahead and become a little bit merciful. Um, I should point out that once you are on the track, you never go back to zero. If I ever lose, uh, for some reason, lose uh, uh, my military strength, um, I just go cruel. But for now, I'm at one mercy. And that is the end of the yellow player's turn. Now we can move on to the red player's turn and see what he's going to do. The first thing that the red player is going to do is, is that he's going to move adjacent to another region. He's going to go to Icewind. And the reason why I'm doing that is because at Icewind, I know I can get some of the uh, Hordes, uh, Hordes card, which are, are really the, the, the most cruel and eh, yeah nasty of dudes in the game. So I'm moving here so I can get that extra card at the end of my turn. Also, in this province, there's only six defense, and this dude's going to like fighting. He's going to try to control the defenses. Not only is that going to get him an ally, but it's going to get him influence. So I know that I'll, uh, you can have like a second strategy, or, or at least this is kind of in my head, but it's always good to control provinces and to and to defeat this different things and to get those banners up on the board, which you're going to see in a minute. So, But with that said, he can move anymore so we'll go to whatever he's, it's on his hand and see what he's gonna play this turn okay so yeah doesn't surprise me that we've got a bunch of these ladies and this dude because that's what's on the starting deck he didn't get his unique starter card but the first thing he's gonna do is he's going to also build and the reason why he's gonna build is because he wants to get that cruelty now he has these two ladies so he's gonna go ahead and build in the green uh, deck, in the green uh, branch, and he's going to build the Outland Tavern because when he promotes a card, he's gonna gain one cruelty or one mercy. We know he likes cruelty. So these are gonna go on my play area. Now let's go ahead and promote and get advantage of this building because you can start taking advantage of the buildings right away. I wanna promote him. He is going to turn into a, well, he's gonna turn into a better laborer. And he's also, well, he's also a defenser, which says, just means that he can defend if I ever have a province that's mine and they want to take it away from me. So he needs, in order to up, uh, upgrade him, he needs two swords. So she only has one sword, but he has two swords. So I'll go ahead and use one of them to then upgrade him. And I just go into the deck and we're going to find his upgrade card. She's still in my hand. Let's go get that. And again, this is a starter card, so it's going to get just uh, out of the game. So he is going to be out of the game and he's going to turn into this guy's also defense. And look at that. This card gains two swords while you have eight or more cruelty. So I know I want to get some cruelty. Now, because I promoted a card and it goes on my discard pile, I trigger that. And when you promote a card, you gain one cruelty or one mercy. So the red player is going to gain one cruelty. Now this lady, I don't really care about her. So I'm going to actually dump her and get five fresh new cards but before i do that we have to get uh, our deck a little bit better with cards from the province that we're standing on so let's do that right so the red player gained a cruelty because he promoted and he wants to go cruel and then at the end of his turn he is at the um where is he at at ice wind which is going to give him a card from the triangle the great triangle and it goes on this discard pile and perfect this is one of the uh, yeah this this card looks like uh, she looks fierce and ready to attack <laughs> but we'll deal with that later um and that is the end of the red player's turn so because everybody took a turn the turn marker moves to turn number two and we can go ahead and start the process all over again two more turns and we're going to need to do that end of the year scoring so let's see how the second turn goes 
Okay, next turn for the yellow player. And what I want to do is before the end of the year scoring happens, I want to go ahead and conquer a province. So I see I have actually one of these Numeri dudes that really has a bunch of swords. So I'm going to declare that I am attacking an unconquered province. And unconquered means that it doesn't belong to anybody right now. Uh, and let's see if that we can change that. So he's going to give me th strength of three. And then I just probably want to use, well, I can't use him because he gives me no swords. So I might want to hold on to him. So yeah, mister, you are going to have to wait. But this is two swords right here. That's four and one more. Yeah, we're just going to use all of them. So now you're going to see what combat with an unconquered province looks like. So what you do is I kind of set them up in uh, ascending order and see how I kind of put this one to the side. The strongest card that you have that you've played is going to determine how many dice you roll. So I'm going to be rolling three dice and to whatever I get out of the dice, I'm going to add two, four, five strengths. So already I have five strengths for sure. No matter what happens with the dice, the province where I'm at takes six to conquer. So I feel pretty confident that we can do it. So what we do is we go to our dice and I have a bunch of the dice here and we just grab three because remember our strongest card says that we get to roll three. Let's get to rolling. Okay, so, wow. All right, I think we did it. We have, uh, like I said, five strength already uh, on our pool. And then any swords that we get are gonna give us two extra strengths. So right now we're at seven strengths. And like I said, our province is only uh, six power province. So we do conquer it. However, look at these little thingies. What are those? Those are punches. We, we actually were, we were kind of careless when we were trying to conquer the province and we lose three defenses or three influence points when we get to the end of year scoring. So we're going to denote all of that in the game board. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take three defenses. So these three little peeps go bye bye. And then, because we got to conquer the province, we are going to put a banner. And now the, con the province is ours. And when we actually uh, are able to do that, we, as a, as a reward, we get two cards from the deck of the province that we're standing on. So he's going to get another two of these green cards that he likes so much. And they're going to go over here. And then let's put our banner on. Okay, so a uh, little bit beat down but the province is ours and it is a forest province let's see do we need uh, any of those for what for our allies uh, no not really so no no uh, progress towards getting an ally but it's always good to have those provinces you'll see at the end of the year scoring how they give you influence or victory points now um it i, I don't want to do anything else with my cards so i'm gonna discard everything and I haven't moved. So if I want to, if I want to diversify and go somewhere else, I could. And I think I will. I've got uh, that province. I'm going to move to the adjacent province. My plan is to maybe get over to the green province next turn. And if I can conquer that, it'd be great. It's going to be a little harder. It takes a little bit more defense, 10 defense actually, to beat that one. But we'll see what cards I get in my hand. In the meantime, I ended my turn here so I can get a blue, which is not my favorite, but you know, I got to move just adjacent so I get that and again if I want to get a second card from that same deck I will I will gain a mercy and I'm gonna go ahead and do that I am more merciful every time and there's actually two of the same I shuffle this what, what is going on and with that my turn is over now I get to refill my hand so that's two and let's get three more shuffle your discard pile and three more that's the end of the yellow player's turn. We can go to the red player's turn. All right, red player's turn. Here are his cards. The first card I'm going to play is actually his unique starter card, which is called Recruiter. And I'm going to play it for the action. So I do not get the benefits of the labor or the sword this turn for this card, but the action is pretty cool. It says, name a faction in your current realm and reveal cards from that realm's deck until you reveal a card of that faction. Recruit that card and shuffle the rest back into your realm's deck. So what it means is I get a free card uh, of, of my choosing as long as it's part of my province. So I am standing right here and I'm still an ice wind, which, you know, I like those horde cards. So I'm going to name, uh, and if you look over here, that's the one is the most. So I'm going to name that uh, faction uh, and I'm going to reveal cards until we get one of those. So let's reveal it. 
there is there's that one yeah and he also looks pretty menacing so that gets um recruit that card and shuffle the rest back and yeah i didn't i only got one so i don't need to shuffle but well let's shuffle just just to say we did it <laughs> okay well this says shuffle the rest back into the deck which we didn't get any but doesn't matter it's nice and shuffled so this one is going to go into my play area let's see what else we're going to do okay next up i want to build and the reason why i want to build is because i want to get better at fighting and this is going to help me while conquering or defending to let me reroll. i need four labor for that i'm going to go ahead and pay one and two and two more and keep this guy who's a good fighter in my hand for next turn now with the four label that i get here i also trigger this guy it says when you play this card, you may inflict one ruin on your current province. If you have six or more cruelty, which I don't, you may inflict an additional ruin. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because that's going to help me conquer that province even easier. So I'll do that. And then this has a power, but I'm not going to use it um, because I don't need to. So four, we go ahead and move this one down here. Now I have that power that lets me, you know, that makes me good at better at fighting or defending and with that let's go to the board and take that defense away so ice one becomes a little bit easier to defeat and i'm hoping to do that next turn before the end of the year scoring i'm only going to need six to conquer that so that's done now at the end of my turn i can move or if i want i can stay there and try to get more horde cards i think i want to stay there because i'm going to try and conquer that province next turn so why go away so i'm going to go ahead and grab one from here and it's a green card so not the best then after that all my cards go to the discard pile all the ones that I played and I'll keep him because he's good at fighting and next turn I plan on fighting now I have nothing on my deck so let's shuffle and hopefully I'll get some of those fierce fighting cards although this is a pretty easy province I don't foresee any issues conquering it but you know you have to rely on the dice and the dice can be tricky sometimes one two three four there is a little bit of luck in this game so that's that so that's the end of the red player's turn and uh, now we go ahead and we move the turn track because everybody has gone and like I said at the end of this turn we are going to go to end of the year scorings and you'll get to see that in a minute let's go to the next turn Okay, so I got this dude that's really good at labor in my hand, so I can maybe build. Now remember, I get a uh, dollar, uh, not a dollar, a labor discount. So if I use him, that's three. If I use my builder lady, here she goes, that's five. And that's enough because the building that I want to build costs six, but with my discount, it only costs five. My discount I got from here, by the way. So now I have another special ability that's going to trigger later in the game. Okay, so with that said, now I have these three cards and uh, I'm thinking of promoting. And this lady costs three labor to promote. And so if I use these two cards, I can promote her. I need to point out that you can promote cards that are in your hand and cards that are in your discard pile. But right now I have nothing on my discard pile. So, you know, I can't do that. You cannot promote cards that you've played though. These are played, they're not in your hand or your discard pile. So I'll go ahead and spend these two cards get a better you know better lady better guild hand and she's gonna turn into a guild artisan which is gonna give me great labor great for building and two swords which is not bad she's gonna increase by a lot so let's go find that in the blue deck because she's a blue card okay so she's turned into the guild artisan and it's gonna go on my discard pile now this is not a starting card this actually belongs to the blue deck, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in the bottom of the blue deck. Now at the end of my turn, I still haven't moved, and I want to move, remember, over to this region, to this province, so that I am an Aramek. I won't have a chance to uh, go ahead and conquer it this turn, which is you know, sad because I would have liked that, but the cards, I didn't get a lot of swords, so I knew that fighting was out of the question. But at the end of the turn, I do get a card from that province. And again, if I want to become merciful, and I do, I get a second card. So my hand, my, my deck is getting full and full. And a lot of the stuff is not even what I'm looking for. I see it, but you know, we'll make do with these for now. I just want to get that mercy. And that's the end of my turn. We can go to the red player's turn and see what he's going to do this time. So the red player is all about that attacking. And he's got all these fierce ladies ready to go and just do. So he's going to play this guy, the blood hammer. 
And it says, when you play this card, you may cool one card from your hand or discard pile. And cooling means you get rid of that card for good. But when you cool, you also gain one cruelty, which he likes. So I'm going to go ahead and the, and the reason the way you do it is you look at the, you play the card you want to cool with, which is going to be this one. And um, you get, um, actually, he, he just gives me that power for free. But if I was cooling with him without the power, you look at that number of swords and you can cool up to two cards with the with this with this one card but he him i'm just going to use him to battle and then i want to trigger his special power that i can call one card from my hand or discard pile. so he is going to give me two swords and i'm going to get rid of you because you're great for the yellow player but not so good for me so she's out of the game uh she is going to be discarded out of the box back to the box because she's a starter card but i do gain one cruelty which puts me at two cruelty Okay, and uh, let's continue fighting. Look, I have a lot. I have six. Six power right here. And this card, this lady, if I want to, when you play this card, you may inflict one ruin on your current province. And that's going to help me uh, with the conquering. But he's, if the province is already at six, and if I keep messing it up, it's going to give me less influence points at the end of the year scoring. So I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use all these cards for the uh, six swords. And now... When I look at them, because they all have twos, the biggest number is still a two, so I'm going to be rolling two dice in addition to having six power already. So I grab my two dice, there we go, and let's see what I get. Let's roll the bones. Oh my gosh, I got nothing, but that's okay. Actually, that's not bad, because we look at our cards. We have the six swords that we need. So it's a good thing that um, I actually took one defense last turn. Uh, so we do get to conquer it. So we're going to put a red banner on that one. Here's our red banner. And the best part is that because we didn't uh, roll any of those uh, punches, we actually stay at six. Six, six points that we're going to get at the end of the game. So that's great. He's going to get six points. He's only going to get four. So. I, I think the red player is doing great. Also remember, because we were able to conquer that province, we get a card from that, two cards from that deck. So it is right here. Go into our discard pile. Oh, nice. We are getting exactly what we want. And I am done with all of these. So they go back. And before I draw back up to five, I can get a, a card from either here or I can move. I haven't moved yet. Do I want to move? I I am looking at is it uh, this one? No. Oh, okay. So he also didn't get anything uh, as far as going for those allies, which can give you points at the end of the game. Their points are at the bottom. Two, two, two. It's not a lot, but the special power sometimes is very helpful. Uh, I think though, I want to try and conquer the gray uh, regions. And there's a gray region here. It's far away, but. Any uh, region that has an anchor like that is adjacent to any other re region that has an anchor. So if I move to Iron, no, Baron Guard, I'll be adjacent to Oldemore. Am I saying, maybe you're saying those things completely wrong, but I might be adjacent to Oldemore, which granted, it's going to be hard to bring down with a defense of 16, but he's the fighter in the game. So, you know, maybe it'll take him a couple turns, but he can go for that. So I'm going to move over here, which unfortunately then is going to give me what color? A yellow card at the end of my turn. So hopefully it's a horde card anyways. Ah, it's a numeri, not bad. He's good at fighting a defense. Goes on my discard pile, and that's the end of the green player. So uh, now, oh, I forgot to move. Did I forget to move this? Oh no, it's four before. Okay, so we have one more turn before actually we get to the end of the year scoring. At the end of the turn, we move this to number four. This is our last turn before we do that end of the year scoring. So he, they, both players still have a little bit of a chance to conquer another province. Let's, let's see what happens in the next turn. All right, yellow player's turn. I was hoping for more swords. I really was because I want to try and conquer Aramek. I think we're still going to try. So I'm going to be on what dice we roll. So I'm going to use, doesn't matter, him. He just gives me uh, labor if I have mercy, but I don't want the labor right now. I want to fight. It would have, would have been a good turn to build, but let's not do it. So that's a two, and then I'm just going to put all my cards out there. Um, this is when you cool or when you promote, which I'm not doing. This is a build card, which I'm not doing, so I'm just going for the swords. I got four, five, six swords, 
I'm gonna roll two dice. I don't know that my chances are very good this turn because it's a defense of 10, but we're gonna try anyways. Okay, so here we go, wow. Okay, he's got one, two, three, four, five swords, and we add that to the two, four, five, six that we had. That's 11, so we did it, guys. But we also lose a defense. So let's go to the board and do all that. We lose a defense, and we get a banner, and that means that this turn, this guy controls two provinces, and that's great, because that, that is actually going to be great for end of the year scoring, which is gonna happen this turn. Uh, we conquered, so we get two cards as a reward. Go on our discard pile. Okay, and I ran out of things to do because I've used all my cards, so all of them are gonna go on my discard pile. Um, I could move, uh, because I haven't moved yet. Should I move? I mean, I have a, a, a guy right here with a defense of six that I can maybe try and get rid of. It won't happen until after year number two because we're done this turn, there's no more. Year one is about to end. Uh, I can try that. I don't think play, Red Player is going to be too happy. But you know what? I got to move, so why not? Let's move over here. I mean, I don't have to move, but I've already conquered that province. I can leave it behind. So at the end of my turn, I will get one of these, another one of those dudes, and I'll get a Mercy to get another one. Green. Oh, okay, it's green, but wow, well, I have a lot of those a lot of those dudes that are eh, not, not the best, but they do have a power when they promote, so when I promote something. All right, so go back to five. One, two, three, four, five. And he's ready for next turn. Now let's go to the red player and see what he's gonna do. All right, last turn for the red player. And, um, you know, he wants to try and, oh, what's he gonna do? Well, the first thing he's gonna do is he's gonna use this guy because that's gonna give him a cruelty. It says, when you call this card, gain one, cru oh, when you call this card. Oh, no, 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 I was gonna curl another card. Well, okay, so let's rethink. I know that I have, I, I do not have a lot of swords, and I have a, uh, what is it, 10, yeah, 10 province, 10, that's a lot. So instead, I'm thinking of building, and the reason why I'm thinking of building is I already started on the green tree, and if I do the town garrison, your cards cost you minus one, or minus one, minus one labor, or, or sword, or attack to promote, and if I promote, remember, I gain a cruelty. So. I know I don't want to promote this one because that will give me a mercy. But if I do two, four, five, six, or actually let's use this guy. Yeah, let's get rid of him for now and keep my nice sword in my hand. So two, four, five, six, I can go ahead and build the town garrison. And now I have those two powers. These are all played, so they go right here in my play area. And then I have a sword, which is not going to help me do much. Um, well, I guess we'll keep them in our hand. Uh, I can also, let's see, I can promote a card from my discard pile, remember? And I do have some cards in my discard pile. It's gonna have to be one that is two swords or one labor. So let's look at the bottom. Two swords, there's two swords and one labor. Okay, see? Okay, we can, yeah, let's do that. Let's promote this lady. She's gonna turn into a four with a sword, so I like that. So she's gonna go back to the blue deck. And remember, when I promote a card, First of all, I do get a discount, so actually I didn't even need to pay that much. Um, but, you know, uh, I also get a cruelty, which I like. So I'm going to use this guy to promote her. Goodbye. She goes back to the deck. All right, so this card, bottom of the deck. And because I promoted a card, I am even more cruel. And I am done. Where am I standing? I'm standing over here. I want to move because, remember, anchor goes to anchor. And I'm going to get one of those precious cards. Um, so, oh yeah, perfect. Okay, one of these other ladies. Um, oh, I didn't, I forgot to get her. What, what, yeah, I didn't promote her yet. I need to find her. Mountain, Clans, Empire. And she's uh, one of those great ones. So she's over here. Mountain, where are you, Mountain Lady? Uh, well, that's, wait, well, sorry, your name is Horde Raider. Not, Mountain, Clans, Empire is where you come from. Horde, where is this horde? Here it is, Horde Raider. Yes, one and four, I like it. That goes there. You know, my turn, I grab the card. All of these I use. So, 
that's it. I could be getting another card, uh, if optionally, if I wanted to, but that would give me mercy, and I don't want to be merciful. I'm ready now at the province where maybe I can, you know, start beating it down and conquer it eventually so that I have both great uh, regions. But for now, it is the end of his turn. We'll refill back to five. One, two, three. Shuffle. And I see how my deck is getting thicker. So now I want to do something about, especially because I gain cruelty when I do. So there's five cards. But this is the end of the year, so we have to do end of the year scoring. Okay, so end of the year scoring. We are going to be doing two things during the end of the year scoring for each player. One is to go ahead and count the influence of each province that we control. But before the end of the year scoring phase begins, our yellow player has a special power that triggers. It says when an end of year scoring phase begins, which is now, add one defense to each province you control. So that's going to give him two points because he controls two defense. So I'm going to go ahead and add those little blocks to the to his two uh, provinces that he has now in his power. Okay, so I got my two over here. So let's move this to the side so we can add a defense there. And then let's add a defense here. It's like they were building a bigger wall or something. The town has progress. Okay, so now we can count. So over here there's five, so we move five. One, two, three, four, five. And his other province with a banner is 10. So we go from 10 to 20. So he is at 20 points right now. And then, the second thing we do is, if you control two provinces that belong to the same region, so two provinces of the same color, then you get extra bonus points uh, right now. So he does, he has two of the forest or green regions. So in the first year, you get four points for having two regions of the same color. So another four points, one, two, three, four. So yellow player is just whooshing along with those points. Now let's go to the red player and see how many. Fortunately, he only has one province, so he's not gonna be getting any extra points. And he has uh, six influence in that province, so that's six points. So we, he's up to 11. So he's, he needs to catch up. He was supposed to be the conqueror, but he's falling behind big time. But you know, it's, it's early on, we can still do more. So with that, first year is finished, we move to second year, and we are ready to begin the second year with the yellow player going first. Okay, so these are the cards for the yellow player who is first again. Now, I have this card in my hand, and I wanna show you guys what happens or what could happen when you promote this card. And I have exactly what I need, because it needs six either source or labor. And I have six labor, two, four, five, six. So I'll go ahead and use all these cards just to show you, just for content. I'm gonna go ahead and put this card back in the green deck. But in the meantime, we just randomly draw one of those cards and look at him. He's a three, five, the war speaker. And we are trying to go for mercy. So if I'm merciful, when you conquer, if you successfully conquer a province with this action, promote a card you play during this conquer action, ignoring all costs. So we're gonna get a free free upgrade. That is awesome. And I'm planning on conquering the province that my opponent uh, owns and I'm standing right on it. I just didn't get enough swords this turn. But dude, you guys, you guys, you're great. I mean, you have great labor, great sword. So I like that. Let's see. So now that I promoted, I really don't have any more cards in my hand. So this all goes into the discard pile, but I'm happy with the card I got, and I got to show you how random can actually be a good thing sometimes. Uh, obviously, I think the red player would have loved that card with that five swords, but the yellow player got it. He's really fighting it out. Uh, and at the end of his turn, I'm not gonna move because I'm hoping to conquer that province, so I'm gonna stay there, and as always, I get one card, okay? And then I will gain a mercy to get another card, another one of you, okay? Very good. And that's the end of my turn. We can go to the red player's turn and see what he's up to. Okay, so let's look at the red player's cards. And all right, so he has his unique starter card again, the recruiter, which remember as an action, I can go in there and get a card just for free. So I'm going to play that card and I am here at Olgamore, which gives me those horde cards that I like so much. So I'm gonna name that faction and see what I get. That's not it. There it is, the Fist of Zerd. He is the faction that I want. So it goes on my discard pile 
and everything that I did not get into my hand now gets shuffled back. So there you go, Mr. Loyal. What is your name? Steadfast Conscript. You go back in the deck. Okay. What else do we have? All right. I was hoping for swords because I have a province with 16 defense in my hand. So I know for sure this time around, it's not the best time to do that. So instead, two, four, two, four, six, eight. Okay. Instead, what I can do is, okay, I can do a couple of things. How about promoting? Because when I promote, I get cruelty. So this is a sixer and I have two, four, six. So we can go ahead and promote and it's going to turn into a better fighter and also better laborer. So we'll go ahead and find our steadfast captain and use these three cards with labor of six. Actually, no, 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 it's sword. So I can't do that. Okay, so since I can promote you because I don't have enough swords, then how about building? I have to build on the green track because they're all green, but I have two, four, six, eight labor. And if you look at the castle barracks right here, it's eight. So while conquering or defending, you gain plus two for each of your blank results. Okay, since I like conquering, that's not bad. Not what I wanted to do. I wanted to get more cruelty, but it'll have to do. Now, yeah, that's all we're going to do this turn. I ran out of cards, so they all go into my discard pile. I am at Oldemore, so I get another card from the deck. Okay, and I go back to five. One, two, three, four, five. I think I want to start pulling some cards and thinning my deck a little bit. But that's the end of his turn. We go to the second turn in year number two. Go back to our yellow player, see what he's going to do. Okay, yellow player. So I know I want to take that province away from red and I have a bunch of swords this time. So I think it's the time to do it. I will use whoop, my strongest card. Oh, you fell, come back. Okay, my strongest card is a three and then um, his province is a six. Do I want to put all of these? I don't think I need to. What do you do? You, this card gains plus one for every four cruelty. I'm not cruel, run for every four mercy. I am at five mercy. So how about I keep this one in my hand for next turn? Maybe I can use it. And with six, I should be able to conquer it because it is a six. However, because it is a conquered province, the defending player does get to defend. So you're going to get to see that. And I'm going to uh, actually, when I, when I do an, uh, um, what do you call it? A uh, conquer province. I'm supposed to do this. I'm, I'm the only one playing, so it doesn't matter, but I'm supposed to do this like this and just declare to the uh, player I'm attacking that I'm going to use four cards to attack you with. And then what happens is the red player whose cards are down here can defend. And the way he does that is he looks at his cards and anything that has a defense icon, he can use to defend. So unfortunately <laughs> he only has one with a defense icon, but I might as well use it. So he's going to uh, use that and he refills his hand. So he was going to get one more card into his hand for next turn. And then we simultaneously reveal. He's going to defend with uh, two dice. And I'm going to attack with three dice. And I already have six power. So let's go ahead and see what the dice say. All right. So for, first, let's roll for the attacker. Okay. He gets two more swords added. So, okay. He has eight. Uh, yep, and then the defender. Now the defender, if you remember, has a special building that says when conquering or defending, you may reroll one of your dice. So we might want to do that. And also when conquering or defending, you gain two swords for each of your blank results. So he actually wants to get some blanks. <laughs> Let's see what he gets. All right, well, he didn't get blanks, but he did get three swords. So with three swords, he is not going to... Oh, well, actually, maybe. He has three swords here, but we also... But we also come over to the province and we add that defense. So he's at six plus two that he rolled, he's at eight. Now the attacker has two plus the six that he got, so he's also at eight. So if he has an equal or greater number, he does get to actually conquer that province. So this banner is gone. We are gonna go ahead and put a yellow banner. I didn't, I wasn't really gonna battle that much with the yellow player, but hey, it's working out. However, if you look at the dice, we did get one of those punchy punch. Now it was rolled by the defender. If it would have been rolled by the attacker, we would take a defense off of the tower. But if the uh, defender is the one that rolls it, what happens is we have to call one of the cards that we played this turn. 
uh, which is not too bad for the um, attacker because he did get a lot of these cards that are bleh. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this starter card. Um, you, get, you have to um, get rid of cards for every punch. You need to look at the swords. So actually, I could get rid of a card that was only one sword, but uh, I don't have any. So this guy card is going to go bye-bye. Okay, with that, because I was able to uh, get that province for myself, I get the reward of two of these. Okay, they go on my discard pile. Uh, this is yours, mister, and these are mine. Okay, I'm happy with that turn. Now, at the end of my turn, I could move, and I think I will. Let's just keep expanding. Uh, we got a windmill. What, what do we need to get? Let me see. Okay, two of those, or two yellows, or two with the anchor. <laughs> we have none of that. So, I can, I see a yellow here, I see a yellow here. So, I'm going to move to the uh, yellow because it gives me yellow and anchor so two of the allies I'm, I'm going for so I'm at Baron Guard now and at the end of my turn I will get two cards one because I have to and one because I want to grow my mercy and another Numera not bad I have one card left which I'm going to keep for my next turn so I refill get four more cards and that is the yellow player. Now we go to the red player and he's out for revenge now. He did not like that one bit. I mean, he's all set up to go and conquer that. And here comes yellow player and destroys his plans. Not to mention he has nothing, no banners on the board, no bueno. So let's go see what he does. All right, so he also got a lot of swords. He also has this dude that calls cards. So I'm gonna use him first. And I'm going to, actually, well, I, I can just use his power when I go. So, you know what? He is, he, no, he notices that this guy is trying to conquer the yellow provinces um, to get that ally that's, uh, that likes yellow provinces. He, he needs to stop that. And he's got a couple swords. So first he's going to move. I see a province, a yellow province right over here, Pilgrim Walk. So he's going to move here and try to conquer it so that the yellow player uh, doesn't have a, yet another monopoly of provinces. So now we're going to try and attack that. It is a, what, a seven? Yeah, seven defense. So let's see if we, can, if we can conquer it. All right, so he has his uh, biggest strength is this Numeri that hasn't been upgraded yet. That's a three. Then he has these ladies. Uh, that let him take some defense, but if he takes some defense away, it's not good for him. Let's see, he's got two, four, five, six. The province itself has seven, so he just needs to roll one more. So, you know, um, do we need to use all of these? No, I want to keep this one. So I'm just going to use two, four, six, and hope that uh, the dice roll is good. You can also just take one defense. Uh, well, I'm going to keep this one in my hand, and let's go to the board. Grab our three dice, here we go, and think about this uh, defense thing. Okay, so I have five power over there and three dice against a seven. I think I'm okay. I don't think I want to take any uh, defense from there. So I'm going to just leave it and hope for the best with this roll. Let's go. Okay, well, I'm glad I, I did that because there's a lot of... Uh, defense that's going to be lost uh, but I did conquer it I have more than enough but then I lose three three defense in that tower so three difference two defense bye bye we go ahead and get a banner on pilgrim walk and we get two yellow cards as our reward put them on our discard pile and I can keep going um, I can move I can stay there um, I also have one more card in my hand that I want to use, so let's do that. Okay, so this guy, if I call him, it gives me a cruelty, but I can't call him because um, I don't have anything to call him with. He's the only card in my hand, but I will call cards with him because my deck is getting thicker and I do not appreciate that. So I'm going to use his one sword, which means I can call one card. I'm still going to get a cruelty because whenever you, um, oh no, when you call, you, you, you lose, uh, you, you, you win, a, you, you get a cruelty, I guess is what you say. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, maybe get one rid of one of these that we don't use. Let's see. Oh, this lady we don't really care about. So yeah, let's get rid of this lady. She is a starter, so she's out back in the box. Okay, and I'm going to get a cruelty. All right, so four cruelty. There we go get in there i mean making some progress 
And then at the end of my turn, I think I'm going to move to Aramek because I cannot let this yellow player just have all the provinces he wants. At the end of my turn, I get a card from Aramek. There you go. Oh, nice. Okay. And these all get put back into the discard pile. We go ahead and go back to five, which is all we got. And at the end of the red player's turn, we move to turn number seven. So let's go to the yellow player and see what he's going to do now. Okay, here are my cards. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and promote a card in my discard pile for two labor. Uh, there has to be something that we can promote here. Uh, let's see, I'm looking at the bottom. How about this dude? I don't really use him that much. So yeah, let's go ahead and find us a 3-3, which is an Outland Settler. So my Outland Settler is here, 3-3. Three, three. When you play this card, gain one Cruelty, and he takes six to upgrade. Can we upgrade him now and get an Outland Noble? Let's see, two, four, actually we can. I think we will. Uh, let's do three, four, five. Do I get a discount? No, I do not. Um, so how about this? We are going to use these two cards. Uh, yeah, we can do that. We're going to use this two cards for the labor to build a building. And we're going to build the Outland Tavern, because now when we promote, we get a discount. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to, with the five that we have, we're going to get a discount and promote the card we just got, which is on our discard pile, and make it into an Outland Noble, which, you know, I think there's only one of those in the deck. Let me double check. Here's the green deck. Let's look for that Outland. There it is. Yes, there's only one. So. I am the only one that's going to have this card, and it is worth four victory points at the end of the turn of the game. He goes back into the deck he came from, which is actually this one. So I want to put him back. There he is. Keep him in order so it's easier to find the cards. And with that, I've used all my cards. They all go to the discard pile. I am, uh, where am I? I am at the anchor, which I want to conquer. So I'm going to stay there and get a, two yellow cards because it's a yellow region. And I'm going to put those two in my discard pile. Then I go back up to five. There I go. And remember, I do get a mercy for having picked up two cards from that region. So I'm at seven mercy right now. Let's go to the red. And he wants to bring down... Wow, he got a lot of swords, so he's going to try. Um, oops, this is the first card he's going to play. Uh, it says Conquer. If this province is controlled by another player, you may inflict two Ruin on it. And it is. So two Ruin from the Horde Raider, and he's going to give me four dice to roll. Okay, and then I'm going to use him for sure. What does he do? When you play this card, you may cool one card from your hand or discard pile. Sure, we're going to play him for the labor, and we're going to cool... Probably from the discard pile, because I have a bunch of cards here. Oh, perfect. We'll cool this guy, because when you cool this card, you gain one cruelty. So I'm going to be getting two cruelties, one for cooling and one for this card. So I'm up to six cruelty. And this card goes back into the gray deck. Okay, so what else do we have as far as swords? Okay, here's another two swords. That puts me at four. Uh, here's three swords and three swords. Perfect. Bunch of power. I don't think the yellow player can come back from that. We are up to six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And um, what the, the province that I'm standing on is ten defense. Now, remember, I should have done this um, face down, but it doesn't matter. I'm the only one here. And then this guy's going to look, the yellow player is going to look for defense cards, and he has none. So that, I don't think he, he, he's not going to be able to do much this turn. So I'm going to be rolling four dice, plus I already have everything that I need to conquer the province. Let's do it. In reality, what I'm doing is rolling to see how much more damage I do to this. Okay, let's roll. Whoa, lots of swords. Okay, so definitely did it because the province that was a 10 got down to an 8 because of the first card that I played, that when conquered I could inflict two ruins, which I did. But I do get it to inflict another two ruins to it. So let's do all the switcheroos. So the first thing is bye-bye, two more of these. And then the yellow is gone. We're going to put a red banner on it because it is now the red player's province. Here's a red banner, and as a reward, we get two green cards. Not that we are thrilled about that, but there we go. Okay. 
And that's it for him. He puts everything on his discard pile. He has nothing on his deck, so we're going to shuffle. And we are going to go ahead and give him five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Make a new deck. And we are going to move the tracker. We are on the eighth turn, which after this, we're going to have an end of the year scoring, our favorite. And at least now I prevented the Monopoly, unless the yellow player can come back and, you know, conquer it again. All right, so we are on the last turn this year, and here are the cards for the yellow player, who's first, and whoa, not a lot of swords, so no conquering this turn. We did get some labor, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, you know what? Let's build then. Um, we actually get a discount, so we can keep one card in our hand. I'm gonna keep this card in my hand, believe it or not, because then this one is gonna go in my discard pile, and the next turn I can promote it, and if I promote that card, I gain one mercy, so. And I'm gonna get another mercy from my building, so that's two mercies from one card that I promote. So now I got seven, and that's enough. And when I build, you may gain one mercy, so here's another mercy. And this is a yellow card, which is going to let me build on the yellow track, which is a track I want to build on, because that's the track that I've already pretty much advanced on. So here we go, and then I got the Pilgrim Sanctum. When another player attempts to conquer a province you control, choose a card in your hand to gain defense. And last time, I wish we had had that building, because we had no defense in our hand. Um, but, you know, that's it. We are going to gain a mercy, correct? Because of what? Because of build. Gain one mercy. Okay, so we're up to eight mercy now. And this card I'm going to keep. I'm going to go back. Of course, I should be probably, actually, before I go back. No, it doesn't matter. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, here's my five cards. But I do get to either move, stand there. I'm going to stand there, and I'm going to get two cards so I can gain another mercy and put me up to nine from the yellow region that I am standing on. So I gain another Mercy, uh, and I am standing here at Baron Guard. I'm going to stay there because I want to try and conquer that province. Uh, my other uh, choice would be to move to the Anchor Ones, or even down here to the blue, but I have nothing uh, on that color, so, you know, I, I'm okay there. At least I will prevent the red player from getting a Monopoly, getting the two yellow ones, which also will give him an ally, so I definitely don't want to do that. Uh, at the end of my turn, I get two cards because I gained the mercy already. I get the two cards and go, they go on my discard pile. So I'm good to go. I got five cards. So red player's turn. What's he going to do? This is red player's hand and he likes all the swords he's got. So the first thing he's going to do is he's going to move and try and uh, conquer another of the yellow player's regions. So he's going to move to Icewind. It has a six uh, defense right now, and he's got a lot of swords, so let's see what he can do. So he's got two of these Numeri dudes, so one of them is going to be his dice rolling, so three red dice, and then he'll use one to power it up, and then, uh, yeah, let's just use all of them, uh, because we're not going to build, so we don't care about building. So he's got three, four, five, six, seven, eight already. So more than enough, but of course the, the yellow player can defend, and now he's got the Pilgrim Sanctum, which even if he doesn't have any defense, he can turn one of his cards into defense, because it says when another player attempts to conquer a promise you control, choose a card in your hand to gain defense. So this one is a defense, so he'll use it, and then I guess he'll use the strongest card he's got with two swords. So he's going to be rolling two dice, and he's got two defense, plus the defense that's in his province. So let's go to rolling. First the attacker, which remember, he gets to reroll one die, and any blanks are actually two swords. So let's see what he gets. Okay, so he's got two swords here. He's got nothing but swords, uh, which he's happy with. He's not going to destroy the province. So uh, two, uh, five, six, plus all that he's got. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Ha! <laughs> Good luck, yellow player. Yellow player is going to roll two. And he's got two to add to the six from his province. Okay, here he goes. And he, well, he didn't roll that bad. He got three, but I don't think it's enough. So he has three. He also adds six from there, so it's nine. Ten, eleven. But ten, eleven is not enough. Fourteen is more than eleven. So he loses that province. He is going to, however, because of the two punchy punch, which, <laughs> you know, whatever they're called, he's going to get uh, rid of two of the cards from the attacker. So let's do that. What is he going to get rid of? He'll get rid of 
he doesn't really build that much so let's get rid of these two uh, yep and then uh, they're both from the green deck so they go back to the bottom of the green deck now we switch banners So you can see how this year the red player has made a turnaround and now he's the one controlling most of the provinces. Uh, we get as a reward two cards from this deck. Okay, oh another Fist of Surd, he likes it. We used all of our cards. So these go into the discard pile. We go back up to five. One, two, three, four, five. Well, before we go back up to five, we can move. Do we want to move? Um, you know what we do because we have a yellow province here's another yellow province it doesn't matter that a yellow player is here we can actually join them no problem we're not gonna fight we only fight over provinces we don't fight each other so they're together and now we go back up to five but before we do yeah, it doesn't matter one two three four five but I am standing at the uh, what is it yellow so I get a yellow card at the end of my turn and I could get another yellow card but I don't want to because I don't want the mercy so that's it for the red player at the end of the red player's turn as usual oh we have to do end of the year scoring but then we're gonna move so let me move before i forget we're on year three now but before that this is it and i think it's gonna be a big payoff for the red player let's start with the yellow player he we count the influence on his provinces first so unfortunately most of his provinces got taken over so he has five influence one two three four five and this uh, second year if you have a monopoly if you have two regions uh, of the same color you would actually not get four points but eight points and then at the third year you get 12 points so really you want to have monopolies by the end of the game uh, but he only has one province so he's not going to get those extra points so that's it for the yellow player oh but remember actually he gets one more point because he does still have that building that when the end of the year scoring starts he gets one defense added so these two actually are going to turn into three so at least one more point is one more point let's switch that up okay so here's his bigger more defense province okay now let's go for the red the red really is going to get a bunch of points this turn there's six over here six over here uh so that's 12 and then 13 14 15 16 points he's finally catching up so uh, i can't see one two three four five six so 28 almost there almost there he didn't make it uh now he doesn't have any monopolies he has a yellow a green and a gray so he doesn't get the eight extra points either which he would have liked to get uh because obviously that would have put him ahead but that's the end of the year scoring now we can go to year three it's the last year in the game so things are starting to get heat up our characters are getting stronger let's see what the yellow player does first okay so i got my super numeri upgrade the uh war speaker so i definitely want to take advantage of that but before i do that i want to promote these cards uh, that was a plan from before so i'm going to use this outland beggar to promote a card in my discard pile because i know i have an outland beggar here somewhere yep there he is okay so when i promote a card remember i get a mercy or a cruelty so there's i'm going to promote him and he's going to turn into a settler he goes back into the green deck so here's my Outland Settler that I just got, goes into my discard pile, and I'm gonna do it again. I'm going to go ahead and use this beggar to promote this beggar and gain two, two mercy. One from my building, uh, that special power, when you promote a card, gain one cruelty or one mercy, and one from promoting him. When you promote his, this card, gain one mercy. So I'm actually at the max mercy, finally. And he goes back to the gray deck, yes, to the gray deck. The next thing I want to do is I want to try and conquer something because if I do I can trigger that power now if I I only have two cards left I'll be rolling five dice but I only have one power for sure and if I conquer the the province where I'm at I'm here with the red player and if I don't make it I'm gonna be helping him if I destroy some of the defense so instead what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my movement that I can use once per turn and come here to Jesra this is an easier province to conquer and I don't have to worry about helping the red player if I miss. So with that said, this is a seven uh, defense. I am going to be rolling five dice and I already have one. So all I need is six more swords. Let's see how that goes. A little scary, but we'll try. We need six swords. Ah, let's see if we can get them. 
Okay, looks like a lot of swords. Let's see, here's three, four, five, six. We did it, guys. Seven, eight, so we have more than enough. But we do get two punchy punches, so we're going to lower the defense. So we go ahead and exchange this three for two. Actually, we lower the defense twice, yeah? Yes, so we need a one, change of one. Here we go, there's that. Oh, come on, stay here, okay and yellow banner we also get two blue cards as our reward okay there we go and we trigger our war speaker merciful conquer if you successfully conquer a province with this action promote a card you played during this conquer action ignoring all costs so we get to promote a card that we used and the only card we used was this one. We can't promote this one anymore. So again, we're gonna get two mercies and we're gonna promote this to another settler. So we find it here. Running out of settlers, I believe. Here's, here's another one. It goes in our discard pile and we get two mercy. Now guys, we're already at top mercy. We are the most merciful of the merciests. So when we can't go any further, what we do is we actually gain victory points. So that's why I was trying so hard to um, get all the way up in mercy because from now on we just we just scream ahead in points so that's what we want to do so we get two because we were gaining two mercy one from promoting a card and one for promoting this card which is going to go back to the great deck which is right here we put it at the bottom of the deck that's a big turn for yellow player all the cards get discarded okay look at this decks they're getting so big and back to five there's four so we shuffle And we get one more. Okay, back to red. All right, so red player has a bunch of swords again because, of course, that's what he's been trying to get. He also has his unique starter card, uh, and as an action, he can uh, just recruit. Does he want to do that? He's at a blue... You know what? Mm, sure, he's going to do it. Um, you know what? Maybe not. How many... His defense... Oh, he's not at a blue. He's at a yellow, isn't it? He's at a yellow. What is, what is at the yellow... No, he won't. All right, I'm just gonna use it for swords. So uh, he's going to use this one, which says conquer. If the province is controlled by another player, you may inflict to ruin, but it's not. We're just gonna try and conquer the yellow so we can get a monopoly. So he's gonna be rolling four dice. We're gonna ignore the ability. And then, of course, the fist of Zerd. Oops. The fist of Zerd is gonna get us three more uh, power. And these guys are gonna give us four more power. I can actually take uh, defense, and I think with four dice and three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm going to go ahead and take a defense, and then I'm just gonna use this for more power instead of for the actions. So we are right now are rolling four dice, and we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're gonna take, uh, what is it? Uh, two defense or one defense? We'll take one defense away from the province. Okay, so first, we take off a defense, making it a little easier to conquer. Then remember, I can reroll one die and uh, any blanks become two swords. So I need three, six, nine. Let's see what we got. A nine, but I already have three, four, five, six, seven, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I already have, so I know maybe one sword and we got this. Let's do it. Okay, more than enough, but uh, I can reroll one of my dice and I think I will. Uh, only because I don't want those punchy punch. So let's see. Uh, I only need a sword, so I got it. Let's see. Oh, yeah, no punchy punch. Very good. So I got two punchy punch. So the promise is going to lose two defense. Let's go ahead and do that. But the good news is that I conquered it, so I do get to place a banner. I also get my reward of two cards. Go on my discard pile. And with this, I got my Monopoly, so yellow player should be worried because remember this end of year scoring, it's 12 points for having that Monopoly. So the yellow player really needs to do something about that. And with that, all my cards go in the discard pile. Uh, I can move or I can stay there. I think just because I'm evil, I'm going to move over here and threaten the yellow province that uh, just got conquered. I mean, it's a, it's a five. I think I can, I can get it done and get a blue card from the deck to my discard pile and go back up to five. 
And with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and move the turn tracker to turn number 10. We are almost there, guys. Okay, so let's get back to the yellow player's turn. Here are his cards. And whoa, nice shuffling. <laughs> All of my conscripts are here. But you know what? They have a lot of swords and I cannot permit Mr. Red Player to get away with that Monopoly at the end of this year. I just can't. That's 12 points that, I, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to his yellow province that he has a Monopoly on and I'm just going to full go blown attack. So uh, all of them are twos. So I'm going to be rolling two dice and I have two, four, six, eight. So hopefully I can do some damage. And then the Red Player is going to try and defend and he has one defense card so he'll use that um, okay so it says this card gains plus two while you have eight or more cruelty or mercy but he's at six cruelty and he's been trying to get cruel but it's not working out that great so uh, let's go ahead and roll for the attacker first Making sure I don't have any, I don't. All right, here we go. So two, and uh, the defenses, of course, are gonna be messed up, but here's my two. So that's uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, now, uh, red player. So he has a couple of abilities. When conquering or defending, which is what he's doing, you may reroll one of your dice, so we gotta keep that in mind. And when defending, you gain plus two for each of the blank results. So with two dice, let's see what he can do. All right, let's go. Oh, whoa, okay, he didn't do bad. He actually got four. So we add, uh, well, four to the defense in the province, which is uh, three, six, seven, plus four is 11. 11 against two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. 10. He actually, yeah, he, he made it. He made it, and not only that, uh, he gets the uh, player to call two cards, I mean, two uh, sword value cards, so he can just uh, get rid of one of his, his cards. I'm gonna go back in the green deck. He keeps his banner there because I wasn't, the yellow player wasn't able to conquer it, but it, he does lose two uh, defense. So we'll go ahead and get change for this three. Okay, so it's a little bit weaker at least, but yellow player still needs to do something about that. He gets no reward because he didn't conquer it. Uh, all these go away. And remember the red player actually gets one more card added to his hand because he played a card. This goes into the discard pile. This goes into the discard pile. And now it's the red player's turn. Um, but before we do that, actually, uh, yellow player, does he want to move? No, he doesn't want to move because he wants to attack again next turn. So he is going to get two cards because that's going to give him another point. Um, because one he needs to get, but one is optional. And if he gets it, he gets a mercy. So that's that. Let's go to the red player's turn. Okay, so these are the red player's cards. And not a lot of swords, but here's another thing that I've been thinking of doing for him. I want to build, if you look at the tree, I've been really going for this green tree. And if I build a shrine at the end of the game, I will gain a point for every cruelty that I have. And I'm good with cruelty. Hopefully we'll get some more. We need 10 though. Can we make it? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That is exactly what we need. 10. So I'm going to go ahead and play all those cards to get the shrine. And with that, I've made it all the way to the top of the tree. These all get discarded. And I uh, let's see if I want to move. So let's go to the board and check where I'm at. OK, so I am at Jezra, which is a blue region. And I have my enemy right there. I might want to just you know, take that for myself. Why not? Uh, all my other, uh, all, everything else that I'm around is already mine. I could move to Aramek. Uh, but that's already mine as well. So I think I'm going to stay there, gain one blue card from the blue deck, put them on my discard pile. Oh, it's a nice one. Okay. And with that, we move. Oh, gosh, guys, this is going to be the last turn. So um, fun. This, this is it. Let's see what, everything that we can do in this last turn. Go back up to five, and it's the yellow player's turn. 
All right, it is the last turn of the game and I see some good swords in my hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to destroy that Monopoly. So remember this card, it's a five. And if I conquer, I get a free upgrade, is it? Yeah, get a free promote. So five and then this one we haven't, I, I, I know I upgraded her, what does she do? If you have 12 cruelty or mercy, which I do, I have 12 mercy. When you play this card, you may promote a card in your hand or discard pile, ignoring all costs. Beautiful. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. It's going to give me three swords and I get to promote. I don't think I want to, well, I know this. I might promote. Let me see what's in my discard pile. And there's, oops, anything that's expensive that I might want to promote. Uh, that's a two. That's, uh, that's, that's expensive. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's my most expensive card. Do I have something that beats that in my hand? Uh, well, well, yes, I do. Um, problem is that I can use him for swords now. If I upgrade him, it will go into my discard pile and I will lose it. Same goes for this guy. So I think I'm going to stick to the plan of going and uh, upgrading my Halex retainer. And yeah, it's going to turn into a Halex mercenary and it's going to go back into the green uh, yellow deck. Halex mercenary acquired. Now when I promote a card, I gain a mercy. Uh, because of my Outland Tavern power, so that's a point for me because I'm already at max mercy. And now we're going to use this one for power and this one for power, not for uh, labor. Uh, and what about this one? Oh, I might want to keep this in my hand so I... Well, there's no more turns. So you know what? Let's go all in. So I have six, seven, eight, nine power already, plus the five dice that I'm gonna roll. Now it is a conquered uh, province, so the red player looks at his cards and checks for defense, and here's a defense. So that's it, he's going to be rolling two dice and then just adding the defense from his province. He also gets a card into his hand, which he doesn't have, so he's gonna have to shuffle his deck, big deck that he did not call enough of, <laughs> and there he goes. Okay, so let's go roll. Okay, here goes the attacker, which is the yellow player. All right, so to the nine that he has, he adds 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and a bunch of punchies. So 16 for him. The defender is going to roll and get... Okay, that's not bad. He gets three and he adds the five from his province, so it's an eight. Unfortunately, that's not enough. So the monopoly has been stopped. Um, we are going to switch the banner to a yellow banner. But before we do that, um, we have destroyed two more defenses in this province. So the starting of 10 is down to a three now. So there he goes. And because the defender rolled two uh, punchy punches, <laughs> I have to call a card with at least two uh, power. So let's make sure that it's not a card that gives me points. So not that, that doesn't give me points. Uh, this is only one, so I have to get rid of another one. That gives me points. So you know what, Numeri, you are three swords worth. You don't give me any points at the end of the game, so you're going bye-bye. Back to the yellow deck. Okay, and that is uh, yellow player's last turn. So this card gets put back in the discard pile of the red player. All these cards get put back over here, doesn't matter, we don't want to refill our hand. We uh, do get, um, we can move. Uh, do we want to move? Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Do we want a card from there? I, I guess we do, it doesn't matter. Do we get a card with points? No, we do not. Okay, so, well, we tried. Uh, and we actually will get another one because this card is gonna give us points regardless because the second card uh, that we pick on our turn gives us mercy, which we do not have, uh, we're at top speed, so, and a mercy track, so, we get another point. So now, last turn of the game, the red player needs to either go back and conquer his province or um, try and get that province down. I think it's better if he goes and gets those 12 sweet points. So let's try it. So with that in mind, he's going to go ahead and move. He says, no, I want my province back. You cannot have it. You cannot take away my 12 points. Let's see if the cards are right. Whatever cards are in his hand, he knows this is what he's got to do. He's got to get that province back. 
So this is what he got. He's got two fists of Zerd, which are great because they have a lot of swords. So one he'll use as the greatest power he's got to roll. And then here's three, four, five. And he's just going to go all in um, yeah, with that. And this is a zero, so yeah, two battles. At just to see, what does this one do? Um, when you play this, you may pay one victory point. If you do this card, gains two labor or two swords. Um, three, four, five. That would be another three. I don't think he needs that. I think actually, what he's gonna do is he's gonna use this to cool, so he can get more cruelty. Because at the end of the game, he's gonna gain points for the cruelty. So he'll leave those two in his hand. Um, so he's up to uh, five and rolling three. Let's see if the yellow player, which this is his province, if he has any defense. He does not. But remember, he does have a building that says when another player, it's a Pilgrim Sanctum right here, when another player uh, tries to conquer, he can add defense to one of the cards he has in his hand. So with that in mind, he'll just take the biggest one, which is one of these, and that will be his defense card. He's going to be rolling three dice. It is looking pretty promising for the red player. Remember, he has two abilities um, because of his buildings. One is that if he gets any planks, they count as two swords. And the second one is that he gets to re-roll one of his dice. He gets to roll first. He's rolling three. Let's see what he rolls. Okay, he rolled blanks. He doesn't mind blanks. Those are four swords right there. And then uh, he's going to lose one defense in the uh, province. The defending player is going to roll three as well, and he doesn't get the bonus of the blanks, so he actually only has one sword. Ooh. Okay, so let's add it up. Uh, defense player has three plus one is four. Yeah, I don't think he's going to make it. Alone, uh, with the cards alone, uh, red player has five, so definitely he got his monopoly back. I guess in this game it's not that bad to be second player. <laughs> you can, uh, you know, plan ahead a little bit better. So, anyways, bye bye, yellow. Hello, red. Um, but before we do hello, red, we do lose one. So actually, this is not going to give him a lot of points uh, as an as a province per se. But those twelve points, it's worth everything. Okay, so this province is over here standing with only two <laughs> two defenses left. But hey. And it, is, it belongs to the red player. He gets two cards over here, uh, none with points, unfortunately. So that's that. And um, let's see. This belongs to the green player, which should get another card into his hand. But since it's the last turn, he's not going to use it. All these, well, actually, these are his played cards. He's not done yet. There is more that he can do. Remember, we wanted to cool some cards. So let's go ahead and do that. OK, so let's cool. So this card over here says, when you play this, you may pay one victory point if you do this card gains plus two labor or two swords and that's the card i'm going to play to cool because it's going to give me three swords which is awesome so i do lose a point bringing me down to 27 but i'm going to call up to three swords i have zero swords here so <laughs> i can call that and then well i can call these two cards or these two cards it doesn't matter i'll call these two cards so i've called three cards and they are all going to go back to their respective decks, but most importantly, I get three cruelty. Just happens that all these three cards go into the yellow deck, so we're going to put them at the bottom of the yellow deck. And three cruelty, one, two, three. Now I'm up to nine. And remember, that's nine points at the end of the game. So I think the red player has just... I don't know that the green player, the yellow player is going to be able to catch it. I think the red player has got this. But with that said, it is the end of the turn. He is standing over here in yellow land. Does he want to move? I don't think he needs to. I think yellow land is fine. But just, just to say he did, let's go back to Jezra. I know Ice Wind, because he likes Ice Wind, and get two cards. I don't think he's going to get any with points. Nope, he didn't. So, but they go into his discard pile. And now we go to the end of the year scoring. For the end of the year scoring, we'll start with the green, I mean, yellow player. And the yellow player has six influence over here. <coughs> I'm sorry. And he has another province with five. He does not have a monopoly because it's green and blue. And um, uh, actually, the, yeah, the red player, oh, remember, the, the, okay, back, back, back. Two more points. Because remember, this uh, yellow player has an ability that he adds one defense. I'll go ahead and do that. 
Okay, so I've did that. Now, before I forget, uh, we finished with the yellow player, we're gonna go to the red player, but last turn when he conquered this province, he could have gotten the yellow ally, the ally that likes yellow stuff, this all father. Uh, control Hallow Vale, and he does. He has two yellow uh, vale, Hallow Vale provinces. And then at the beginning of your end phase, add one defense to a province you control. So that should have triggered last turn at the beginning of his end phase. So he's going to add one defense to something. He keeps his allies over here. That was actually a pretty good one. I'm thinking, I'm thinking over there to get that extra point. Doesn't matter where he does it, but let's let's put it over at what is it? Baron Guard. Baron Guard. Okay, now that we did that, now we can count all of his delicious provinces he's got all over the place. So he's got six points here. Uh, and he's got six points here. Okay, and he's got three points here. And he's got four points here. Okay, he almost, he almost made it. But, um, you know, now he's going to, of course... Uh, <laughs> get those sweet 12 points because he has the two uh, yellow provinces so one two three four he's at 50 and what we do is uh, we get a, a second cube to continue counting so 50 he's at four uh it's 12. five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so he's at 58 right now and with that we can go to the end of the game scoring and figure out who is the winner in uh, this particular game all right, so at the end of the game, the first thing we have to do is we have to look at every card that's in our hand, in our discard pile, in our deck, this huge thing. And you notice the victory points there? We're just gonna go ahead and count all of the ones that have victory points, we're gonna add them up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so I went ahead and counted all of the victory points on everyone's hand, deck, and discard pile. The green player, uh, the green, yellow player, I don't know why I keep calling him green, maybe because he has a lot of green cards, but he got 12 points, so here he goes. One and two is for the 50, and then we get another, find another cube, and he still has uh, 10 more points, so he's, he's, he's doing it. Uh, the red player got three points in his deck, not that many, he really didn't focus on that, but uh, that still puts him ahead. The next thing we have to do is we gotta get uh, points for every structure that we built. And yellow player has built one, two, three, four structures. That's it, so four more points. One, two, three, four points. The red player has built one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five, some five points. One, two, three, four, five. The last thing we do is we gain uh, victory points or influence depending on if we built any level four structure, so the, the biggest structure in the game. The yellow player didn't. He forgot to do his cathedral, cathedral of scars. And maybe if I was, uh, if I would have been smarter, maybe I would have done that. That would have given him, uh, at the end of the game, gained five points for each level four structure. So, which would have been just one. So another four points. I still don't think it would have made a difference because if we look at the shrine, the sovereign's shrine that the red player built. It says at the end of the game, gain one point for every cruelty or mercy. And that's why, you know, at the end of the game, I really push for that cruelty. That's going to give him nine more points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So at the end of the game, the red player is at 26 points and the yellow player is at 15 points, meaning that we have a winner. Cruelty wins it, at least in this game. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got a better idea of how to play this amazing game that is the path of light and shadow. If you have any comments, leave them below. Any other questions, something that I didn't cover. I think we saw everything that the game has to offer. Oh wait, I forgot. <laughs> Before I go, there's another two points to be had because of the ally. Uh, so actually, he makes it to 28. Now we've seen everything. I was like, yeah, I showed you allies. I showed you everything. Now I showed you everything. I think we covered everything. I hope you enjoyed it. See you on the next one. Well, guys, there you have it. We did it. We did a full run through of Path of Light and Shadow. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment below. We love to hear your feedback. Thank you to our viewer that asked us to play this game. If there's any other game you guys like to see, just let us know, we're here for you. If you're not doing it yet, please follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We post really cool pictures of your favorite board games as also we give you some previews of what games we're going to be putting out on our channel. 
By the way, if you're not part of the village yet, subscribe to Meeple Village and join the village which is ever growing. I will see you guys on the next one, but until then, may you play more games.